All right, everyone, this is Spaceman Spiff coming to you with Picture for the first time ever doing my 10th audio commentary. So thanks for checking it out. I think the video and the camera should be working all right. There will be some lag while loading up the replay, I've noticed, but hopefully that'll pass as we go. So bear with it for now. I promise it'll get better once the game starts moving. Um, so today we have an Orc vs. Elf. I'm going to showcase two different Orc vs. Elf games I played recently. And they're both going the same strategy. So this one is a strategy I like to play against Orc players. I'm not... I don't have like a specific build order I like to use. There's not necessarily a specific hero order or anything like that. But I ultimately very much like to go mass Ancient of War units against against Orc players. It's, it's tricky. Sometimes you'll... You'll need to expand early, sometimes you'll need to expand a little later. Either way, you'll definitely need an expansion at some point in the game in order to keep your production up. But it can be a lot of fun, and once it comes online, it's a lot of, a lot of problems. Sorry, it causes a lot of problems for the Orc player. <clears throat> that said, the Orc player can also cause a lot of problems for you while, while trying to get there. Blade Masters are great against... Ancient of War units. Huntresses not so much early on, but later later game, a level 5 Blade Master has no problem with Huntresses. Um, we expect to see Raiders, we expect to see Spirit Walkers, both of which do pretty well against Tier 1 Elf units, Spirit Walkers in particular. Raiders don't do great. Huntresses do well against Raiders, but Ensnare is still trouble. Um, healing Wave, oh, looks like he's getting a Blade Master. I obviously don't know that for sure yet, but at this point in the game, it looks like he's going standard. Blade Master, Grunt, He's probably going to build another burrow and start teching, so I'm expecting the, the Raider Spirit Walker Tier 2 to tech. Um, and I was saying the Shadow Hunter also does very well against Elf Tier 1 units. Healing Wave is great. If if they decide to go for Serpent Wards, that's very effective against Huntresses because they do piercing damage. But you will have the larger army going tier one map or sorry mass tier one so you'll you'll be able to control the map hopefully you'll be able to secure an expansion and hopefully with with a good map control and intelligent like picking intelligent fights you should be able to win these games i it's not a sure thing we're going to see what happens in these games but you'll see this time i thought the map's big i was feeling a little greedy i thought i could get away with priestess of the moon first probably not a good idea but I, I wanted to go for it and I do like to go for it first a lot of the time because when you get away with it the true shot aura is incredible searing arrows does incredible damage and scout is an underutilized and really powerful spell so that's that's really the primary reason I got my priestess in the moon so you can see I ran over here just to creep this green camp because I thought it'd be a little sneakier than trying to get this one or this one if the Blade Master came to harass me, he'd get the kills and force me to run away, and it would be problematic. This one I thought was a little trickier. It was a little more likely I'd be able to get away with finishing it. And it seems to be going pretty well at this point. As long as you pull with the Priestess of the Moon, it's it's not hard to creep camps like this, because she does do quite a bit of damage, and she's an agility hero, so she, she has armor as well. I believe she's an agility, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can see I finished my wall off. It's not great. I shouldn't have my second Ancient of War walled into my base, because now any Huntresses <laughs> it produces are going to get stuck. But at, at least the Blade Master can't get in, which is what my primary concern was at this point. Meanwhile, he's probably creeping. He's probably either got both of these. Maybe he's trying to grab these really quickly. I'm not too sure. But at this point, once night falls, you should be getting your first Huntresses out. And I have. And you'll see I, I screwed up my base, so I had to uproot this Ancient of War to allow these guys out. But it it's going completely, at this point, relatively uncontested, right? I've not seen the Blade Master. I haven't been given any trouble. I don't need to worry about keeping this sealed, at least right now. Also, I'm not doing a hard tech, so it's not the end of the world if the Blade Master gets in and nets a Wisp kill or two before I'm able to micro them, like he's doing right now. So he got one kill, but I'm not teching, so I can rebuild my Wisps. Here he comes, and goes for my Moonwell. So now I've got a fight on my head, hands. I've got three Huntresses against a level 2 Blade Master with the exact items we would expect him to have. Let's see, what did he creep? He crept here. He does not crept that. He does not crept that. He, what was his other creep? No. No. Did he creep mine? No, no. 
Well, he crept something else. Yeah, he crept mine. So, there we go. But I'm able to push him away pretty convincingly with three huntresses and the priestess in my own base. And you can see I, I keep building in, er, huntresses. I'm going to wall this off at some point, but I'm not feeling too, too threatened right now. I think once this guy finishes, I'm going to uproot and plant this one here, which is what I should have done in the first place. Live and learn, right? And I came over here to creep this because I know it's so easy. And, of course, he comes the moment I, I start creeping. Luckily, I had a Huntress here, so I'm able to at least scare him off for a little bit. He doesn't want to deal with my army. And now I get level 2, and you'll see I'm going to pick up Scout right away. Because I'm against a Blade Master, and Scout is really effective against a Blade Master. He won't be able to turn invisible and threaten my army or creepjack me anymore as long as I keep that owl above my head. And at some point in the game, that's, that's going to happen. So with this Huntress, I'm keeping tabs on his army. It's still just Grunts and a Blade Master, so I'm not too afraid. I guess I was wrong. I haven't uprooted yet. But while I know he's there, I figured I'm going to try and grab this Ogre Magi. And I do lose a Huntress here. I might even lose a second Huntress. It's probably greedy. But getting that vision is so important, like I always talk about. So I think, do I lose that Huntress as well? That would be bad. I lose one Huntress here. Okay, no Huntress is there. And I do get the, the ward. At this point, I, I teleport home because I don't want to engage these things. I don't want to get picked off. I know I'm not in a great spot, but I thought, you know, at the very least, I'm going to get home and get safe, and I did nab that item, which is really big. And now I've got the scout out. So this scout is going to be massive for the rest of the game. I lose some firepower by not going searing arrow, searing arrows, but the, the owl scout is going to haunt him. It's essentially a map hack. Essentially, sorry. It's essentially a map hack, especially once you get level 2 or level 3 um, Owl Scout. Because your cooldown is short, their vision is insane, and they last for forever. And they're invincible. So I'm sending this one scouting just to keep an eye in case you were trying to run back into my base. I'm creeping the gold mine. I should have another Owl Scout over my head in case the Blade Master tries to harass. Then I'd see him coming, I'd be able to turn my focus on him, and... Even though I can't keep him in place, there's enough firepower here that I'll scare him off. And here, so I'm expanding now at the 7 minute mark, when I'm still tier 1 at 42 of 50 food. And it's so important that I secure this expansion. I need this gold to start coming through in order for me to keep up the production, which will be able to combat his... Uh, Spirit Walker Raider Army because Spirit Link is so so effective I need to be able to melt through his whole army at once. I need as much firepower as possible. So you see we're going to engage in this little dance here. I have a couple Huntresses up north keeping an eye on him there. I have the Owl on his army and I have my army here. And it's risky for me to creep this but he's definitely not able to. I'm going to get this Peon kill with these two Huntresses. You know, see, we're going to play a little game here. I have so much vision, right? I have so much vision right now. My expansion's going up, so I'm loving that this is happening. As long as he's here doing this little dance with me, he's not scouting my expo or slowing me down. And my owl's here just keeping an eye. So he starts to creep right as I run away, which is a huge mistake. I don't know why I turned. I should have stayed here to just continue buying time and, and bothering him. Instead, I completely overcommitted. And now I have to run all the way back, and by the time I get there, it's going to be too late. And this fight's going to go poorly for me. So now I'm bringing in my two more Huntresses, which I had kept up top, also to keep eyes on him. I was hoping to, to maybe dissuade him a bit, but I think I was a little too late. He gets a Hex off, so he's going to kill this Huntress. I do succeed in getting this, this rune, which is a big mistake on his part, I think. But this this was not a fight I should have engaged what I think I should have done was stay here and keep pushing back and forth let let his army get a little bigger let us stay even and then I can start exploiting my my expansion instead now I'm taking a fight which I probably shouldn't be taking I'm losing more huntresses I have no lockdown so his units can micro away I've already teleported this was this was a really bad fight for me to take I did not need to do this I could absolutely have taken this fight five minutes later, let him run around a bit and just kept toying with him with my scouts, and I would still have another four or five Huntresses here. So 
That was really bad. Don't engage the orc army unless you're absolutely positive you're ahead. At this point, I was not. The expansion wasn't running. I could have just bought more time. So I did manage to get the rune, though, so I see where he is. I have all the map vision in the world right now. I can see my expansion. I can see up my base. I have vision on my hero with the owl scout. Um, by vision on my hero, I mean I can see if a blade master is coming around to creep jack or anything. And now I'm sending out a second owl scout to track down his army, which just ran over this way. Meanwhile, my expansion's just about finished. I'm still tier 1, which is not ideal. If I hadn't lost those huntresses, I would have been able to tech. I wouldn't have to be producing more. This is annoying as well. I didn't want to be taking that damage, but it's okay. I saw the blade master was here. So I came to pressure him, because again, I don't want him checking my expansion. If he's worried about my army here, then he's not checking this. But I'm still I'm still in such a scary spot, because look at his army here. He's got grunts, raiders, and spirit walkers, and a level 2 shadow hunter with two healing waves on him. This is not an easy fight for me to take. At this point in the game, I'm thinking either I push and can stop him from attacking me and buy more time, or or maybe poke and prod and keep him busy, but I don't want to engage in a fight. So that's what I'm thinking, right? I have vision this whole way through. I know where he is right now, so I, I came immediately to his base, and I'm going to try and kill a burrow or two. Force a teleport, buy some more time, because my expansion is not really fully kicked in yet. My army's at 49 of 70, but that's not enough to combat the orc army when it's, you know, the size it wants to be. The 50 food orc army with Grunt Raider Spirit Walker is going to beat my Huntress army of 50 food. There's, there's just no question about it. But by doing this, I do force him to teleport. So this was nice. This, I gained some ground. I'm going to teleport out. I lose not even one Huntress. So two burrows for nothing, essentially, because we both, excuse me, we both teleported. And now I, I'm sending another owl in. I'm just going to keep it on the Shadow Hunter. I usually have my owl shadow the shadow hunter because of blade master with boots of speed and wind walk is just too fast the owl can't keep up you saw him zip away there so i'm going to use this owl to watch his main army and i'm going to keep another owl over my main army so i don't necessarily know where the blade master is at all times but i'll know that he's not with his army and i'll know that he is not with my army so he'll be poking and prodding somewhere else and realistically he's probably checking the expansion so now I'm hitting 63 food. I bought. I still haven't teched. I think that's a mistake again. I should have stayed at 50 to tech. Now he's scouted my expansion, but I'm not getting the extra gold income that I would. So I'm really getting 14 gold a second or a tick where he's getting 10. I assume he's at under 50 food. 49, yeah. So he's getting 10 where I'm getting 14. That's not that big a gold advantage. As opposed to had I stayed under 50, then I'd be getting 20 to his... To his 10 and that's a significant advantage of course but by breaking upkeep too early i was not able to build my 80 food army as quickly as possible he did get to my gold mine which is not ideal it's interesting because you can repair a gold mine for free that's i don't know if everyone knows that but repairing a gold mine is free because it costs nothing that's what it, the, it's based on and then I sent my Huntresses in here again to take out more burrows and hopefully force another teleport. Unfortunately, he's coming from above, and I saw the Blade Master coming with my Owl. So I quickly turned to focus. And he can't absorb much damage, right? But this is not a good fight for me. Here, I'm in trouble. This is not good. My Huntresses aren't in position. I outnumber him for sure, but he has level 3 Healing Wave with a lot of mana. He has Spirit Link. He, he's prepared for this fight, and this is not a fight I should be engaging in. Devouring another Huntress. There goes another Huntress. I do manage to get a Spirit Walker, so that's nice. I'm hiding a couple in the front just to hurt his pathing. But I lost a lot of units here. I lost a lot of ground. I should have teleported away immediately to try and... Uh, do I lose two more Huntresses? Awful. I should have teleported away immediately... Um, just as soon as his army came around the corner, I should have gone home. I would have been at 70 or 80 of food right now. I would have extra gold, so my tech would be a little further ahead, or I'd be able to get another attack upgrade or armor upgrade. No, I have 1-1. So I do have 1-1, which is very important also for this strategy. 
you want to be at 80 of 80 food, you want to have a lot of huntresses, and you want to have a reasonable amount of archers. And you want to have moonglaves, marksmanship, a three attack, three armor, like the the thought process is that once you have the expansion up, tier one elf units are not expensive and they're really fast to build. So you can get that 80 of 80 food armor sorry, army pretty quickly if you play the game properly and if you're able to defend your expo properly and you know play dance keep the orc busy I was not able to do that I'm still tier one I'm on my way to tier two but I don't have the upgrades necessary my hero's doing all right but I don't have any archers and archers are also very important they have so much more damage output than huntresses obviously they die quickly to a blade master but if you have enough of a huntress army and you have enough archers the damage output is it mitigates the the blade master focusing them down one at a time so this is my this is the big fight. I miss a massive surround against a shadow hunter, but it wouldn't have mattered. He had the end potion, and instead I managed to get a raider. Big win for me, right? Uh, but the fight comes in, and even though he's only got grunts and his two heroes, they're both level four to my single level four. It's still the grunts are taking a lot a lot of moon glaives and not weakening very quickly. So it's not looking great. He does have to teleport home. But I don't have map control at this point. He's throwing down two towers, which makes me feel a little comfortable. It means he's scared of my harassment. It means he's wasting some wood. So I did see that, and I was like, oh, maybe I'm in a more comfortable position than I think. Because I wasn't feeling great knowing I was still at tier 1. Still not tier 2. That's awful. Still building Huntresses. That's also awful. I should have switched over to Archers by now. I could pump out 6 Archers in no time, and that would add more damage to this army than I think the two Huntresses I have on the way here are going to contribute. Especially without Moonglaives. But that's going to happen, right? I wanted to try and surround him here, so my thought was I could try and split my army into two groups, catch him from both sides. While I have the opportunity here, I might as well kill the... the what is he? Ogre Lord. Get the good item, which I'm sure it is. Wand of the Wind. Not perfect, but it's something. And his Blade Master comes in to harass my base. Really not concerning. I was building a third Ancient of War to help my income, but... Again, my, why am I building it there, right? It doesn't make sense. I could have built it right here, which would have been a blockade. It means it's a little harder to take my expo. I think that was a mistake. And he's going to manage to take out an Ancient of War, which really is a waste of time. I don't think his Blade Master should have been here doing that. He took damage. I guess he killed an Ancient of War, but it's really not that detrimental. Shouldn't have lost that Wisp. And I'm sending in my Owl. So again, he's still Tier 1. Or, sorry, not Tier 1. He's Tier 2, but he's still got the small army of pretty standard units. Is he broken food yet? No, he's still at 50 of 60, so he's getting more gold than me. He's now hacking away at a Moon Maw, which, again, I think is a big mistake, but... He is going to get the kill because I don't have enough wisps around. And I thought, alright, if you're going to be wasting time with your Blade Master killing the moon well, I can use that time and that map control to make sure you haven't expanded anywhere. So that's what I'm doing. I'm checking. I saw that he hadn't expanded here. I didn't check here. I probably should have. I don't know why I didn't. That's a big mistake. Um, and I came to creep this thinking I'd be able to get hopefully level 5, an aura item, and I have a zeppelin to help me help me with my micro. I sent these guys up to deal with the Blade Master because it was getting frustrating. But the shockwaves from this Ogre Lord are just, just wearing down on me. I should never lose a Huntress here. That's bad play. But I do succeed in getting uh, my level 5 Priestess of the Moon. I do not get True Shot Aura. Major mistake as well. I think I was just having a lot of fun with my Owl Scouts this game and Sentinels, which are also great on Huntresses. If you are going Huntress in this strategy, definitely get Sentinels and throw them up everywhere. Um, but I was I was having probably a little... Oh, no, I didn't even pick a skill yet. We'll see. I'm, there we go, what I get? Yeah, I got Owl Scout level 3. Unnecessary. I definitely, definitely, definitely should have gotten True Shot Aura. But here we are. I bought a healing scroll and used it immediately because my units were weak from the Ogre Warlord. And then I have another scroll of healing and a scroll of protection. And here's here's the last fight of the game, probably. It's a big fight. So I, I did throw down an Ancient of War there eventually, and look how much time I bought. But it wasn't enough to secure my 
my main. He does siege it down, yeah. And now I have the bigger army, but he teleports out. He got my expansion. That's that's a good play on his part. I did have a nice concave, and he couldn't micro back at all. So he was. I think he was right to teleport out there. It was not the final fight. I, I misled you. I apologize. Um, you can see I have a shredder here, which I did pick up because I was short on wood from building Ancient Wars that were getting cancelled and just standard miss micro for me. Um, so 69 of 70, I can't build anymore. I'm not exactly where I want to be. I don't have the double income. I should have thrown down another Tree of Life immediately. I can't believe I still haven't. I'm teching to tier 3 and I see his armies moving north here so that leaves me with a bit of an opportunity to move in. But he's coming, he's taking out my expansion wisps now. That's probably why I didn't expand, because I knew he'd be back. So, I split them as much as possible. I lose another Huntress needlessly. You see I have a bunch of wisps going to different parts of the map, just so the Blade Master can't follow them all at once. But, I think at this point it's probably too little too late. His army's looking really threatening. He has 2-1 upgrades to my... 2-1 upgrades. But he's got a level 4 Shadow Hunter with 400 mana and a level 4 or 5 Blade Master around here. And my army's just been dwindling, right? I, by losing the expansion, losing needless Huntresses here and there where I should have just been picking a fight. Giving him a full Book of the Dead use on those damn Spirit Walkers. So, this fight's not looking good for me. You can see I move in, I thought, okay, I'll try and take down the Kodos. Maybe he's devoured a couple so I can save some. I have my Zeppelin again that I was hoping I'd be able to pick up some of these Huntresses with, but it wasn't working. I call a good game and leave. So that was uh, the first game I've posted that I lost. If you haven't watched all of mine, I'm sorry if that's a spoiler, but I did lose that game. It didn't go well, and I think I pointed out a lot of my, my big weak points were definitely, definitely in the area of not expanding at the right time, over committing in that one fight in the southwest where I lost a bunch of Huntresses when I was trying to build my expansion. If I had played around a little more and not engaged, I would have had extra resources to spend on tech, which means later in the game I would have had more upgrades and it just it snowballs from there. So the next game I have, it's the same kind of strategy, not played the same way, like I was saying before. I I don't know exactly the right way to do this strategy, so I've been trying a couple different things. Uh, I don't always go Priestess of the Moon first. I don't always go two Ancient of Wars first. Sometimes I start one Ancient of War and I attack and at Tier 2 I expand and start introducing more Ancient of Wars. There, there are variables. I just know that once it hits 80 of 80 food, it's a really tough army for the Orc to deal with. And that's what I'm trying to get to. It's just getting there. It's It still takes some experimentation. So this game you'll see Alter, Moonwell. I'm going to speed it up a little bit for the early game. Uh, I'm pretty sure in this one I was indecisive, so I started with an Ancient of War, and then eventually I'm going to change my mind into Huntresses. So, like like I tend to do, I don't... I'm very flexible. I don't stay with one concept. Like, when I commit to one strategy, I'm very willing to change it up. So you can see I started Keeper of the Grove Archers. I was going to tech, try maybe a tri-hero thing, but... <clears throat> That's dangerous against a Blade Master. I was already in kind of a dangerous spot. So this time I'm opening with Keeper of the Grove Archer. Also, he's not as good at creeping as the Priestess is on her... Sorry, on their own, the Priestess is better at creeping than the Keeper of the Grove, I think, because he has to spend mana. And he's not an agility hero. But with an Archer, I'm still able to keep, kill the Green Camp easy enough. Calm, I'm not overextending. If he comes to kill me, I can quickly run back. So I shouldn't be able to lose, our, or I should be able to keep my archers alive if a blade master does come in to harass me. So you see, I've now got a second, third archer on the way. I'm building my hunter's hall, taking my time with this build. I could wall off. I haven't yet. Being a little more patient, though. I don't need to go straight for mass huntresses. I'm not feeling too. I'm not feeling too vulnerable right now. That's a good word. If he comes with one Grunt and a Blade Master, I might lose an Archer, but I should be able to, to retreat effectively enough and maybe pick off a Grunt kill. That's also why I kept getting Archers. Three might be a little little excessive when you're going Huntresses, but I, I, 
I wanted the extra stability in case of the harass game. And you can see this allowed me to tech much easier. So in this game, I'm going to tech before expanding. I'm going to try an expansion on tier 2 because I think maybe it might be a little more defensible or I might be in a better position if I have two heroes. So I get level 2 and I'm against an orc so there is definitely merit to getting Thorns Aura but I decided to get uh, Force of Nature instead. Just because, again, I'm not worried about mana right now, it's night time, it's early game, and I might need that extra meat. Just in case something happens, those trees could come in handy. Worst case scenario, I am planning on expanding, so hopefully I'll have the gold to buy a Tome of Relearning if it comes down to it, and I need to switch over to Thornsora. Um, so I came over here, I just have, there we go, three archers, I summoned some trees to get help me with meat. Take the Overseer out and start killing the weak guys. You don't need a lot of units to creep this, uh, this expansion over here. It's a little sneaky. I have my first Huntress on the way, second one coming. I have now finished off my wall so a Blade Master can't get in. And I'm, I'm comfortable. Here goes the next kill. And there we go. Reasonable items for a Keeper. Nothing too fancy. Nothing too... Special, but I guess there are no items that you get for a Keeper of the Grove. And you're like, yeah! <laughs> you know, he's not that sort of hero. You, you know what you're getting with the Keeper of the Grove. So now I'm expanding. I'm not even at Tier 2, so I should correct myself. I'm, I'm throwing down a sneak expansion, but it's, 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 yeah, it's a sneak expansion, right? It's not obvious. This is the one that they'll check first. I'm already almost Tier 2, so if someone comes to scout my main right now, the thought process is not going to be, he's expanded, the thought process is is probably going to be we're getting two Ancient of Winds coming down because I think the the standard approach against Orc would be uh, be sorry Demon Hunter Beast Master Tinker Master Root of the Talon right that's that's what we expect to see on tier two you go in and harass and try and cancel the Orc buildings that's what he's expecting even though I haven't ex I'm sorry even though I haven't scouted at all which I haven't spoken about also awful I should have scouted a long time ago uh, I'm assuming I'm against Run. Grunt, Blade Master, Shadow Hunter, that's just always what I assume. So this is me now. I came out to scout this expansion, saw he hadn't done anything, which was nice. I'm building my second Ancient of War to protect my Tree of Life. It's just a buffer. And I thought, you know, I'll, I'll take this while I have the opportunity. He's not around. I'm not going to do too much damage to an Orc base. And by going in with a Keeper and Huntresses, it definitely reveals that I'm doing something out of the ordinary and... and if he hasn't scouted me yet, which I don't believe he has, then <clears throat> then I still have the jump on him strategy-wise. I'm hoping. You'll notice I didn't take my archers along just because three archers are so vulnerable to a blade master with boots of speed. I didn't even want to open that can of worms. So I, I just came with my, my huntresses. And I see he's doing exactly like every orc does, right? He's got a pretty reasonable base. Because Bestiary is just about up, so I'm too late for the Tier 2 push. I wasn't really going for it. I knew I was late, and Huntresses are really, really weak at the Tier 2 push because Burrows do so much damage to them, and because the Keeper of the Grove can't tank damage like a Demon Hunter or a Beastmaster can. But I figured I'd get some damage in here at least, kill a Peon or two, be annoying. As soon as he puts them in Burrows, I'm going to run away. And then as soon as they come out, I'll go back in. So I don't know too much what's going on right now, but I know he's going to have to come back to defend at some point because he doesn't want to lose a barracks. That's a bit of a loss. And my Keeper of the Grove will definitely be able to net a couple more Peon kills as long as I use Entangle. So here I, I teleport out. Definitely unnecessary. I was afraid there would be some ensnare or something, I guess. I don't know. Hex could have caught a... A Huntress or two, maybe, but that was an unnecessary teleport. That was a panic teleport. The Orca showed up. Get out of here. I could have run. What are you going to do? But now I have a couple more archer, or Huntresses and Archers, and I got a Priestess of the Moon second with True Shot or a... No, Searing Arrows. And I got Searing Arrows this time because I wasn't going map control as much. I was feeling pretty comfortable. I had my expansion up, and last time... Something that hurt me was a lack of firepower, so I thought with a Keeper of the Grove first and with Searing Arrows from the Priestess, that adds a lot more damage to my early game and to my focus fire in small army skirmishes. Because the Priestess doesn't... she doesn't seem necessarily as as powerful as she is, that because she has no active abilities, really. 
I think it's easy to underestimate her, but the the damage output that a Priestess of the Moon adds to a to a Night Elf army, especially a Night Elf army of Tier One units, Hunteress, Archer, and uh, Glaive Throwers, that that True Shot aura is just insane. Not to mention Searing Arrows is insane. So now my expansion is just about com completely up and running and will have paid for itself shortly. I'm building Huntresses out of two Ancient of Wars. I have a third one going down, which I think is necessary. You want to have three. And I'm on my way to Tier 3. So already I'm looking so much stronger in this game. Based on tech, I have my scout at level 2. Did I lie? Did I not get True Shot Aura? No, I got scout at level 1. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got scout at level 1. Um, sending it out. I did all that talking and, and now I have to take it back. I apologize. Do I get True Shot Aura or Searing Arrow level 2? I don't know. But I saw a Raider going this way and a Spirit Walker, so I'm just going to follow the Spirit Walker. He'll eventually join up with the army. And that means he's not in his base, so I took that as an opportunity to go in and try and kill another Peon or two or force a Teleport. And it's going to work well for me. We'll see. The Spirit Walker's coming down still, so I still know I'm safe. Use another Entangle. I'm going to probably get another kill. Hopefully I get that peon. Do I let that guy live? I do. Okay, so I... Uh, oh, no. No, okay. I run back a little further than I need to, and now I'm going to go in with my hero again, try and get an entangle. There we go. Use my force of nature, but I made sure not to hit the tree that I had a sentinel on, because that vision was really helping me. But he decided to hit my base, so he nets a Hunter's Kill here, and he's going to come and try and trade. Um, questionable. I know he doesn't want to waste another Teleport, that's his thought process. Or does he not? He doesn't even have one. He doesn't even have one, so... He did force me. He will be able to deal with my base, with his army, much more effectively than I can deal with his. Especially when he has a Kodo Beast back here behind all the burrows. That would be a pain. He's going to deal more damage to me, so I teleport home. Start repairing my tree, send out more treants. And Keeper of the Grove is already coming in useful. Getting that radar in place forces him to stay a little longer. I was able to repair my tree with these three wisps, which was nice. And the Blade Master, now he's finally coming for my archers, but that's that's not gonna work. I'm trading blows up here, but it's going okay. I'm in my base. I when he overcommits, I decide I can focus fire, and he's he's forced to run away. But these, these trades went pretty well, right? Look at how weak his army is. Look how weak my army is. We, we're both hurting. But because of Spirit Link and... Sorry. His army is so evenly weak because of Spirit Link. But I had a big enough army and enough damage output that <clears throat> I was able to break through it and force him to pull away. I have one, two, three, four, five. A lot of weak units as well. So that was a tight fight. Definitely could have gone either way, but having the base advantage, having the Ancient of Wonders available, means I was I was probably, even if he had stayed, even if he had a little more, if he had had that Kodo and Raider with him, for example, I think I probably would have won that fight had he stayed. But now that he pushed back, I'm, I'm feeling pretty comfortable, because I know he still doesn't know about my expansion, so that's a difference. He doesn't know I, I had expanded where the previous Orc did and was able to pressure this instead of pressure my main. Sorry, which which I don't know if this guy would have been able to take it down, but it would have caused more damage than, than focusing this Ancient of War, right? So I'm sending my units up. Um, I'll send my Keeper of the Grove here. I did not get the Sentry Wards this game, so I don't want to show him that I have so many weak units, but I definitely need a Healing Scroll. So I came in here to grab a Healing Scroll. Yep, and a Teleport. And you can see my army starting to get a little bigger now. I've cracked over to 60 of 80. I have tier 3, I have, there's the heal scroll, just one attack upgrade. So my upgrades are still behind right now, but I'm sure that I've got Moonglaive. There it is, Moonglaive, which makes your Hundra squad that much more devastating. That extra bounce is huge when you have a lot of them. And I think I've got a full control group, including my heroes and 10 Huntresses. So that's it. around that point is when I start switching over to Archers. And you'll see now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Uh, I, I think I should still be building more archers as well. But either way, I'm looking pretty good. I have a scout. Send it out. 
saw that the Blade Master wasn't on me right now, so I thought I could probably get away with creeping this quickly. I'm gonna go for it, and, and it's easy enough with Huntress and Archers. You know, creep camps melt. These guys are annoying, but it doesn't matter. And he saw, he must have seen, so he's coming to creep jack me, or he's going for the expansion, either way. Here he comes, not a great spot for me, but I know I have to engage, because I don't want him taking my expansion. And I just, I start trading blows. It's important not to let your units chase. You, ju you just want everyone dealing damage at all points in time. It's okay to focus fire, but not if your units have to run around the battlefield to find them. If it, focus what's close. So, for example, instead of telling all your Huntresses to attack this raider, I should have just grabbed, like, gone, grabbed a box here and attack that raider, you know? Instead of having these guys run around. It's because you lose damage output, and the whole point of the strategy is you have an insane amount of damage output with the Priestess of the Moon and so many Archer Huntresses. And you can see that looked like a pretty even fight, but I, I walked all over him this time. He has level 4 and 3. I have level 4 and 3, so it's not like I have a level advantage on him. But this, this went well. I managed to get another Entangle, which is not going to get me a kill, but had I had Owl Scout out at the right time, it might have. And now my, my Archers survived. I have four Huntresses remaining and three Ancient of Wars building them at the same time, so they'll, they'll replenish quickly enough. Also, like Dryads I mentioned in a previous commentary, but Huntresses move really quickly. So not only do they spawn quickly, but once they spawn, they get to your army fast, which is something that's easy to forget or easy to, to not consider how powerful that is because the difference is, you know, if a Grunt spawns here and it takes a minute to walk to my base. When he's attacking my base, that's a minute of waste of time for that grunt. If I attack his base, and then a Huntress spawns and runs over and it takes 30 seconds, my reinforcements are, are coming at double the speed his are, right? It's really nice to have those, those units with faster movement speed, and that's a lot of what elf units are like that, at least Huntresses, Dryads, Bears, I think. Do Bears move faster than Abominations or Torn? Probably not. But even Huntresses and Dryads are, are key units that are very maneuverable and can be used for map control in a lot of ways. And I think they're a lot of fun to use that way because they, they definitely die quickly. They do not have any armor. They are unarmored, but, but that movement speed can really lead to a lot of fun games. <clears throat> so now I'm back in my full control group of Huntresses. I've got a good number of archers now. More streaming through, I think. How are my upgrades? Getting level 2 attack. I, I'm behind on upgrades. I should have more upgrades at this point. I've bought a healing scroll and a protection scroll. And another healing scroll. I have... like Fog of War is on right now, and I have vision all over the map, right? I can see his main. I can see over here with my owl. I can see here. Uh, you know, again, I should be placing more, but these these owls also are great from Huntresses. Reveals the Blade Master. Just just it helps you control the pace of the game. So there, I did see units running to the west, and that meant run north. All right, let's try and catch him. Let's catch an expansion. Let's get a creep jack when he's doing the red camp. Let's do something big here. Got a couple weak units, but enough units that it doesn't matter. I have a level five keeper of the grove now, level four priestess, and I catch his expansion and in the middle of creeping the red, which was an overcommitment on his part for sure. He does get the kills, but uh, <laughs> I managed to walk in on him at the right end. But I think it's, it, regardless, even if he hadn't been creeping that, if we look at the size of his army, it had gotten to a point where I had gotten out of control, right? He, he wouldn't be able to compete with this now that I had this healing scrolls, the speed scrolls, all the archers. I'm at 77 of 80. He's at 36. If he had been at full health, he would have been at 50, but it's just a different stage in the game. I have Moonglaives, I have Markmanship, I have Longbows. I have two heroes instead of one. So the main difference, I think, was getting that expansion up and, and having it uncontested for so long. That definitely, definitely made the difference in this game, and that's, that's why I lost last game. But it's still a similar strategy, building towards getting this massive amount of units up. So this one's going to result in a win for me. It's a, you know, that was big and tangled too. Blocked off a Shadow Hunter. It, He's going to call a good game right here, and I, I feel for him. That's a shitty way to lose. Sorry, sorry, I shouldn't swear. Uh, but I think I had the game at this point either way, and I think, I, think it, I think the game still showcases how this strategy can be played. 
So I, I don't think that's the only way to go about it. Keeper of the Grove and Archer first is definitely questionable. It was a big enough map that it worked for me. And he didn't harass immediately, which was really nice. Um, but there, there are various ways to go about it. Bigger maps, you can try going Priestess of the Moon first. Other maps, like even Demon Hunter first and then into Priestess of the Moon, probably works really well. And then you can maintain a harassment style game with your Demon Hunter and a couple archers. And then on Tier 2, do expand and get your Ancient of Wars. I don't know. There's a couple paths you could take, but it's, it's fun and exciting and I like... I like that approach where I have an end goal that I want to achieve and it's just like, so how can I feasibly get there? So I, I hope you enjoyed this commentary. I apologize for my ugly mug, <laughs> but thank you for watching. I will post again soon and have a great rest of your day.